seems that today, gaming monitors try to be everything for everyone. Long gone are the days of super fast TN 24 inch panels, as today a gaming monitor needs to be fast, while also color accurate for content creation, bright enough for HDR content, as well as just a good monitor for business use altogether. But a lot of times these monitors tend to be a jack of all trades, master of none kind of situation. So when I looked to replace my 38 inch ultrawide review here, I wanted to see if this was still the case. The monitor in this case, the ASUS XG279Q. And in many ways, it's same old, same old for gaming monitors. But it's still a little interesting when you start to dig down into it. So let's take a look. To get the specs out of the way, the ASUS XG279Q is 27 inches, 1440p, IPS, is rated at 170 hertz overclocked, and has a one millisecond response time, which a lot of you left in my previous reviews is kind of listed on a lot of panels today and isn't really actually the case. On top of that, this monitor is HDR 400 rated with 400 nits of brightness across the entire display. It has G-Sync and the cherry on top, which really is what sets it apart from other monitors right now, Asus's new ELMB Sync feature, which reduces motion blur, or so it says. Essentially, ELMB Sync is Asus speak for black frame insertion that matches itself to the refresh rate of the display. This allows you to run G-Sync and match your display's refresh rate to that in-game, while still clearing out any ghosting that you may get from images that are way too fast. If you want to learn a little bit more about the feature, I would check out Linus Tech Tips video in the description below on the VG278Q, as they already went over it and can probably explain a little bit better than I can. That VG278Q is also extremely similar to the XG I have behind me, but it's missing a few key features that really sold the XG on me. Those two features being the HDR400 spec on the panel and the DCI-P3 rating of 95%. While the HDR400 spec wasn't bright enough for true HDR content out of the box, SDR content was extremely good to look at, with everything being bright and accurate in games, Netflix, and just general business use, even before I broke out my trusty Spider Color 3 to calibrate it. The menu system on the XG was extremely easy and intuitive to use, with every option being in the appropriate submenu that you'd think it would be in. My only gripe is I do wish that the buttons were not on the side of the monitor, even though I admit this probably isn't going to be an issue for most of you unless you run a second panel up on the right side. I still wish, however, that Asus would take on an approach more like Dell, um, where they have buttons right on the bottom of the display, or even LG, which is the one thing that they usually get right, with that little joystick straight at the bottom of the stand. While personally I'm running the monitor on my triple display mount, the stand that came with it was extremely sturdy. It does have a gamer look, um, it's a little sharp, it's very pointy, and it does have some RGB features that you can turn on or off, but as far as a stand goes, this thing kept the monitor in place. It had all of the movements you'd expect for a $600 display, and unlike the 38-inch ultrawide, it stayed where you put it. See here, as I move it up and down, there's no sag. It's kind of good. While very pointy and certainly gamer focused, most of the materials on the XG felt really, really good to the touch. Again, something that the LG just didn't really cover for me. All the plastics were soft touch, or at least felt a little bit higher quality. There were no creaks and rattles, and the RGB lighting on the back, while not really my thing, did work extremely well and was very vivid. So if you want to hook it up with Asus Aura Sync with the rest of your PC, by all means, go do it. It definitely works well. The thing that I really like, however, is that when mounted, you can hardly tell this is a gaming monitor. Most of the gamer features come with the stand or on the back, whereas on the front you have a single bezel on the bottom. And apart from the ROG logo, it's pretty stealthy. So, so far, this monitor has ticked every single box going down the list. With great form factor and function and color accuracy, there's not a whole lot to bemoan here. So where's that catch that I mentioned earlier? Well, the XG279Q has a lofty spec sheet. It seems that to get everything working perfectly into its best ability, a lot of those specs need to be turned down. Let me explain. 170 hertz? Well, Asus doesn't deny it is an overclock. But when I have the monitor set at 170 hertz, there was obvious flicker on the display. So much so that it definitely hurt my eyes. So I turned it down to 160 and 165. And while the flicker wasn't so apparent, I still got a major headache. Kinda thought it was still there. So all in all, I turned it back down to its native refresh rate of 144 hertz. While 170 is great and all, it's only a marginal improvement and it's especially not that good when it causes flicker and actually causes more problems than good. 
Then comes the infamous ELMB sync feature, which I am happy to say does, at face value, work extremely well at 144Hz. But then I did some research into strobe crosstalk and found that 144 is not really ideal for ELMB sync. After doing a couple Blurbusters tests, which I can link to in the description below, I found that there was some double imaging going on at 144Hz when turning on the sync. And that's to be expected, as when you put a black frame in between a frame, the monitor has to catch up. So 120Hz was the perfect setting I found that kept everything pretty lined up on all of my tests, with minimal double image, minimal flicker, and everything kind of working where it should. So that's where I've left the monitor at for the time being. I should mention that I didn't really see any issues in games or anything in actual use at 144Hz as far as crosstalk goes, and I only saw that in my benchmarks and different testing. All in all though, I still left it at 120Hz just to you know, give myself the peace of mind that everything was working properly. So according to the numbers on the box, we've already crossed out the refresh time and the ELMB sync feature working to the best of their ability. So what's next? Well, I had to take a look at that one millisecond claim. And as far as that goes, I'm actually pretty happy to say it performed pretty well. While not a true one millisecond across the board in any of the tests that I performed, I got anywhere from 1.6 milliseconds to 2.2. So while not exactly what it said on the box, which most monitors aren't anyway, it was a pretty damn good performer for everything considered. As for the other features, uh, well, never turn on the variable backlight. This thing doesn't have enough zones to make any sense and just makes it a blotchy mess, so always leave that off. And for HDR 400, you're really not going to be using that to watch HDR content on this display. To me, the HDR 400 spec was just enough saying that you can get to 400 nits without ELMB sync on. And with ELMB sync on, the monitor was bright enough to still be usable, as that really tanks the brightness when you turn it on, I'll tell you that much. If you think about it, putting a black frame in between every single frame really is going to limit the amount of light that you can shoot through the display. So with ELMB Sync on and all the features I have set, I gained a consistent 150 nits of brightness, and that was color calibrated. Otherwise, probably was able to get to 160 or 170 nits across the entire panel comfortably. And I'm going to be honest, it's more than enough. Most of us run our monitors at super, super high brightnesses, and I tend to think it's not really the best case. So color calibrated at 150 nits, I'll take that as a win, especially when I can leave ELMB Sync on at all times. So after all of this info, where does the XG279Q stand for me? Well, I still freaking love the thing. Running at 120Hz with ELMB Sync on and everything else set to the settings I mentioned above, it just feels natural and it feels like, honestly, one of the most responsive and best gaming monitors that I've ever used, even once you turn down the settings. Am I blown away by eye-popping HDR? No. Is it the highest refresh rate I've ever used? No. But on all accounts, this monitor performs great as the specs I have it set at, and it's really the best monitor for me, as I'm one of the few who needs this monitor to be everything for everyone, and not just a top performer in one class. If you are just looking for a gaming display, I highly suggest bumping down and looking at the VG that I mentioned from that Linus video earlier, as for pure gaming, you're getting most of the features of this XG like a $200 discount. Also, maybe look at some 24 inch or 240Hz 1080p panels. As if you really, really don't care and you just want something that's stupid fast, there's plenty of those out there. If you're looking for a monitor solely for entertainment and color correction, honestly give the LGs that I use on the side a try. I'm gonna post a link to those in the description as below as they're color accurate, they're 4K, they run really well, there's very little backlight bleed and Honestly, for a secondary or just a do-everything business case display, they're kind of the top I can find. That is before I review the new Dell 4K that just came out. We'll see about that next week. But if you need something that can do everything at a good to great level, while maybe not being best in class in gaming or in color, the XG is perfect, and I can't recommend it enough for a one monitor setup or just someone that needs a display that they don't have to worry about it slacking in any side. The XG279Q is going to be my daily driver display for a long time. Are there more monitors on the horizon? Yes. Will one of them maybe take the crown? Yes. But I'm having a hard time finding any reason that I'm going to have to switch this out in the next one or two years. So that's the review. If you liked it, give it a like. If you disliked it, slap a dislike. 
hoping to have a couple reviews out this week as I've been sitting at home doing nothing besides making videos for a while, so those should be out pretty soon. Feel free to check all the links down in my description, um, and if there's anything else that I need down there, feel free to let me know in the comments. Let me know in the comments too if you liked the review, and if there's anything you want me to change. And for this one, I'm TK with TK Tech. I'll see you guys in the next video.